नमस्ते एवरीवन टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी फियर्ड टॉपिक मंगल दोष इफ इट इज इन योर हॉरोस्कोप ओ माय गॉड योर मैरिज बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट दिस मंगल दोष एंड एस्ट्रोलॉजर्स बिलीविंग इन मंगल दोष हैव बीन अ रीजन बिहाइंड मेनी फेल्ड मैरिजेस एंड मेनी गुड मैरिजेस आर नॉट हैपनिंग व्हाट इज द ट्रुथ आई गिव मी एन आंसर what do you think mangal is a sanskrit word so there are many manuscript readers sanskrit uh, experts nowadays you know with the advent of uh, uh, the inclusion of sanskrit in google translate many sanskrit <laughs> scholars nowadays available you tell me mangal is a sanskrit word the sanskrit word is kuja kuja bhauma Mangal is not a Sanskrit word, but somehow Mangal is so deeply ingrained that people take Mangal literally. Yes, Mangal means auspicious benevolent, auspicious things that happen in life, and the one of the most important auspicious thing that happens in life is marriage. To such a great extent that in South India, in some places, marriage is known as Kalyanam. Some places, marriage is known as Mangalam. Kalyanam and Mangalam both indicates good auspicious things, good auspicious beginnings. Maybe this is the basic reason of uh, attaching Mangal with marriage. I don't know what Mangal have specifically and precisely done to create havoc in the marital life of people. God knows what. all the intellectuals intellectual astrologers and it is very rare a breed to find intellectual astrologers so oh my god it is a rarity but all the intellectual astrologers since day one have been vocally against the uses of mangal dosh let's try to understand what it is mangal dosh tells you that if mars is situated in the first house second house fourth house seventh house eighth house or the 12th house of the horoscope it is bad for marriage it leads to divorce in marriage death of spouse accidents in marriage if the horoscope is not matched with another horoscope having the same type of combination how true it is let's try to understand mars have two aspects whether three one is a common aspect for every planet third one is two are special with mars and there is a placement of mars seventh aspect from the position of the planet is common whereas mars has an extra aspect on the fourth house and on the eighth house so when mars is situated in the ascendant and you know all these astrological rules and formulas have been formulated keeping in mind that the planet is situated in the ascendant this is a very basic point which astrological researchers understand fourth house eighth house seventh house becomes very important because mars cast his influence on these houses but what about the first house second house and 12th house now when mars is situated in the first house he will create problem related to the first house in the second house and 12th house he will also create problem related to these houses but how are they connected to marriage 12th house indicates bed pleasure according to some modern classics people associate bed pleasure with sex oh my god do you sleep over your wife or your husband for that matter no you sleep on a mattress not on a person they will die they will suffocate sorry all the sexual relationships and anything as such should be seen from the seventh house that's why it is known as the kama bhava the sanskrit name kama bhava the house of sexuality goes to the seventh house so 12th house related to sexuality is a misconception is a hoax the influence of mars over the ascendant will give the nature of mars to the native making them aggressive rational not bonded by any words etc which can be bad for marriage because you as a partner if you have these traits in your personality can be really difficult to cope up with 
no regarding the second house second house is the house of family and the logic is because a spouse or marriage is an addition to family second house also becomes very important in marriage so the but why the inclusion of mars in the second house should be a problem first of all the general result of mars in the second house or mars influencing the second house which is astonishingly very true is that when mars is connected to the second house one gets uh, one gets alone in their life so there is a portion in their life when there is no one with them generally it comes as you grow older after 40 45 you are left alone no one is there to stand with you either they separate their ways or they die this is the result of mars in the second house and certainly when mars is situated there it will give loneliness to the life which in turn when looked at a broader perspective with the help of the logic and the you know the hidden motivation of the prediction we come to know that it may be a reason for separation from the spouse this seems to be very very true and because the second house is the eighth house from the seventh house eighth house which indicates the longevity mind it not death because it indicates the longevity mars a malefic in the eighth house from the second house can really be very bad for the longevity of marriage and can actually foretell bad for marriage however the inclusion of second house for mangal dosh is only supported by south indian classics of astrology whereas north indian classics of astrology don't include the second house mars to be counted in mangal dosha puja dosha whatever to say the fourth house indicates happiness and also indicates virginity rather say ethics and morals heart and intention of the nature now when mars is connected to the fourth house person can have big morals bad intentions the virginity the purity and the dedication and devotion to the spouse can be a problem this is the result that you actually see person will have bad situations and bad fortune in his life because of which he will not be able to enjoy things and because he himself cannot enjoy it is normal that he will not be in a position to give anything contribute anything towards their spouse which in turn will affect the enjoyment of their spouse as well this is the basic reason why mars is taken as bad in the fourth house seventh house which directly relates to marriage when a malefic like mars comes there it gives the malefic tendency to the seventh house making the person aggressive you know not following what others are saying and all these bad traits of mars fights disease theft fire incidents lot of aggression these things come but mars in the seventh house makes a person clear hearted pure compassionate thinking of everyone mars in the seventh house is a person who is so pure in heart that they will believe anything that you say at first until and unless they get profoundly cheated in their life they never become street smart take my words for guarantee eighth house eighth house is known as mangalyam it relates to the longevity of marriage because it is the second house which is maraka for the seventh house it decides whether the marriage will sustain or it will die the maraka for the seventh house is also the ascendant which happens to become the seventh house from the seventh house but second house is the prime maraka prime death inflictor as compared to the seventh house so second house being the death inflictor and a malefic like mars being situated there is actually a terrible combination and can actually foretell death to marriage which will lead to divorce death of relationship death of spouse end of relationship etc but you must have noticed up to this extent that whatever we are talking about is the house result of mars as per vaidik astrology there are seven types of result which have to be seen in the rashi chart and the same seven type of results can be seen in 
seen from moon horoscope, sun horoscope also, and four types of results are to be seen from every division chart. Out of the seven type of prime results which have to be seen from the natal chart, this is just one of the results that is based on the house. What about the Rashi? What about the house lordship? So later on, people realizing that it is only the house-based result and not the Rashi-based or house lordship-based result have started creating exceptions in Mars Dosha saying that if this happens, Mars Dosha does not exist. If that happened, Mars Dosha does not exist. But what is the reality? Regarding Mars, because it indicates aggression, right? He, he is a commander in chief. He will only take the order of the king, not the order of everyone. Mars and gets theft and stealing when it is connected to the seventh house, someone steals his spouse. Like Ram, who was having Mars in the seventh house, his wife was stolen by Ravan. In modern day scenario, whether someone else seduces his spouse, takes them away, etc. Such things happen, people steal your, steal your spouse or you steal someone's spouse. Right, so someone is in relationship with a lady. They are not able to marry that lady. You come into their life and you know their parents set the arranged marriage to you. You actually get married to the person. The person have to marry you. So what you have done? You steal the spouse from the one he was in relationship with, right? So Mars have many negative traits. That's why he's a male. Why Sun is a male? Or why Saturn is a male? Because Maximum things which they rule naturally that comes from their natural character, natural significations, maximum of those things are negative. That's why they are taken as a malefic planet. Otherwise, there is no other specific reason of, uh, uh, behind taking them as a malefic planet. But what about Mars and the fifth house? Let's only talk of the house result, which is being considered here. What about Mars in the Fifth house. It will be bad for childbirth. Is it not a bad result for marriage? See, childbirth is not directly connected to marriage. However, in the Indian scenario, it is a very strong consideration. So if the person is very mean on getting a child through marriage and it only considers the birth of child in marriage as a, uh, you know, as a, as, as a completion or as a fruit of uh, marriage, then Mars in the fifth house should also be considered as a Mangal Dosh. And what's bad about the ninth house? See, as I told you, in South India, marriage is known as Mangalam or Kalyan. I will tell you from my experience, ninth house have a great say in marriage. Indicating dharma, the biggest dharma of a human is to get married. This is the biggest dharma one have to go through. And all the dharmas in life, the dharma of being a father, the dharma towards the society, all the dharma that one have to partake in, all the duties that one have to partake in starts with marriage. In fact, all of the 16 major samskaras which form the part of dharma have to be seen from the ninth house and marriage is no exception. So according to my experience, ninth house have a great bearing on marriage even more than the seventh. So Mars in the ninth house can also be taken as a Mangal Dosh. It should be taken as a Mangal Dosh. There is no doubt about it. What I believe, why some classics don't take Mars in the second house to be in Mangal Dosh? Because when Mars will be in the twelfth house, his eighth aspect will be on the seventh house. When Mars will be in the ascendant, his seventh aspect will be on the seventh house. When Mars is in the fourth house, his fourth aspect will be on the seventh house. Mars in the seventh house will be in the seventh house itself. Eighth house indicates the longevity of marriage, Mangalyam, because it is the marker for marriage. Mars in the eighth house also foretells bad results for marriage. So that's why these particular houses are concerned. But take my point, other malefics are no exception. The biggest research technique that I can tell you for mat matchmaking, the biggest matching technique that comes from the parampara is this particular technique. Count the number of malefics situated in the first house, second house, fourth house, seventh house, eighth house, and twelfth house of the horoscope. If the horoscope of the spouse is having equal number of malefic influence, plus minus one, one more influence or one less influence, then it is a good match. 
otherwise it is a pathetic match and if this condition is not satisfied then despite 36 gunas out of 36 gunas marriage will fail take my words i will write it on a white paper and send it to you after signing it and this rule will never fail this i have taught in the traditional match making course webinar that i have done 3 years back i right this have a technical name which i am not revealing right now coming back to my point again looking at mangal dosh we find a particular point that only the house result of mars is taken there is no doubt in saying that the house results are also prominent and out of the seven result because because of the seven major results which have to be seen from the natal chart house result is one of them it is one by seventh probability that mangal dosha can create this problems in marriage however one thing you cannot forget that if the match making is good that means if two people are compatible towards each other then despite the fact one is having mars dosha and another is not having mars dosha it doesn't matter marriage will be good only point 1 point 2 what we should understand what i am telling mars is a malefic why he is a malefic because maximum of this things that mars indicate aggression anger fire rationality not listening to people death accidents wounds etc all of these things are considered bad no one will appreciate anger right because jupiter indicates discrimination which is very good quality to have he is considered a benefic planet but we have to understand that when a planet becomes vargottam when a planets go in his mula trikona rashi when the planet is exalted when the planet is in his own rashi he loses his malefic aspect up to a great level so when mars is in the same rashi in same navamsha it becomes vargottam when mars is from 0 degree to 12 degree of aries it is in mula trikona when mars is in 12 degree to 30 degree of aries or the complete of scorpio it is in swarashi or when mars is at from 0 degree to 28 degree of capricorn it is in exaltation and in these conditions despite the mars making mangal dosha there will be no effect of mangal dosha as the result of mars have turned benefic in the horoscope and the mars dosha in these cases should not be dreaded especially especially i will want to mention one more rule which i have recently taught to my parasar sutra course students there is the upgradation of a yoga mars venus combination i wrote an article way back in 2017 where i have mentioned that sharavali tells you mars venus combination is the best combination to become an astrologer without any doubt specifically in my research i have found that mars venus combination in navamsha is even more effective as compared to the natal chart for someone who come into astrology and i can say it with guarantee that anyone having mars venus combination in the horoscope at one point of time or another point of time will be interested in astrology for sure guarantee now mars venus combination is also told to give one extra meridian of airs and extra marital affairs and such things can you deny that mars and venus combination does not give an extra marital affair you cannot you cannot this is very true. so there is a result for a particular combination that is told that result sometime happens and that result sometime does not happen what is the difference what is the difference should i tell you the difference if the planet makes a yoga that is based on the house the planet's yoga gets upgraded for an example mars venus combination will behave as a mars venus combination until and unless it transforms into a raja yoga or dhana yoga or a dhana yoga or a khala yoga whatever then yoga khala yoga so you must have not heard the name so not talking about it when it is a connection between a kendra lord and a kona lord if there is a connection between a lord of first one fourth uh, and 10th house that is kendra 
and Kona 159 house lords. It becomes a Raja Yoga. When it is a combination between second lord, 11th lord, 5th lord, 9th lord and Lagna lord, it becomes a Dhan Yoga. Now it cannot be the case that one of Mars and another of Venus rule the houses which fall in Dhan Yoga. So this will not be the case at all. Forget about it. But Raja Yoga, they can. It can be the case that it will never be the case that one of that both of Mars and Venus are the Lord of second, 11th, 9th and 5th house. Both of them becoming Lord of these houses in any horoscope is not possible. Dhani Yoga, they cannot upgrade. The Mars-Venus combination cannot upgrade to Dhani Yoga. But the Mars-Venus combination can upgrade to Raja Yoga. There can be a case where Mars is the Lord of a Kendra, 1, 4, 7, 10 houses. 7th house is not included in Raja Yoga, so remove it. There can be a case when Mars is the Lord of the first 4th and 10th house and Venus is the Lord of the first 5th and ninth house in 5 to 6 ascendants. If there is a Mars-Venus combination and this combination happens to be a combination between a Kendra Lord and a Kona Lord, this particular Mars-Venus combination upgrades from a normal combination to a Dharma Karmadikti Raja Yoga. And when the combination is upgraded, the result of having extra metal affair, having illicit relationship, having many affairs which Mars-Venus combinations give, will transform and translate into a Raja Yoga, giving no extra metal affair, no cheating in marriage, nothing as such, but actually giving professional success and professional hypes. This have to be very clearly seen for any combination. And if it is happening, no doubt about it. Aries ascendant combination between Mars and Saturn, I will never say it is bad because it is the combination between Lagana Lord and 11th Lord, Lagana Lord and 10th Lord. It transforms into a Dhani Yoga and Raj Yoga. Whatever bad result you have learned for Saturn-Mars combination will never be applicable to Aries ascendant for sure. Guaranteed. Without any doubt, write it from myself. Okay. The same goes with Mars also. If Mars is situated in the ascendant, being the lord of the because ascendant is Kendra also, Kona also. If Mars is in the ascendant, being the lord of the fourth house, tenth house, fifth house, or ninth house, there is no Mangal Dosha. If Mars is in the second house, being the lord of the second house, eleventh house, fifth house, or ninth house, there is no Mars Dosha. If Mars is in the fourth house, being the lord of fifth house and ninth house, no Mangal Dosha. Mars in the seventh house will definitely cause a Mangal Dosha because seventh house is not counted in the house of Raja Yoga. But Mars being the lord of the fifth house, ninth house, second house, and eleventh house situated in the seventh house will not be a Mangal Dosha. Mars in the eighth house being the lord of the eleventh house, fifth house, and ninth house will not be a Mangal Dosha at all. And Mars in the twelfth house will always be a Mangal Dosha until and unless Mars is exalted, Sorashi, Muldrikona, or Varvakta. These particular points you cannot forget while judging the Mars Dosha. This is the second point. The result based on Bhavadipti, lordship of houses by planets, transforms the nature of planets. Saturn is a very, very, very malefic planet, but not for the one born in the Libra or Taurus ascendant, because here Saturn will become the lord of good houses, and despite giving miseries to them, Saturn will give good results to them. And the Saturn being weak is bad for Libra and Taurus ascendant, whereas for all other ascendants, Saturn being strong is a problem. So this have to be carefully judged. This have to be very, very carefully judged. Even a criminal will not do bad with his girlfriend. Right? You have to be very clear about it. Right, so these three considerations you have to keep in mind before you talk of Mangal Dosha in the horoscope. That is the point number. That is the set number one. Another set that is very important. That is marriage is a matter of Venus, seventh house and seventh lord. So you understand a particular point that if seventh house, seventh lord and Venus are free of afflictions or are majorly positive, then in that particular scenario, Mangal Dosha is almost negligible. 
सेवंथ हाउस सेवंथ लॉर्ड एंड द सिग्निफिकेटर वीनस इन अ गुड कंडीशन द मंगल दोषा विल बी इन इफेक्टिव द मंगल दोषा विल बी यूजलेस बिकॉज द मैरिज फैक्टर्स आर गुड एंड बिकॉज मैरिज फैक्टर्स आर गुड मार्स विल नॉट हैव द इन्फ्लुएंस और विल नॉट हैव द से ऑन मैरिज मैटर्स until and unless mars himself by his placement association or aspect starts afflicting either venus seventh house or seventh lord this you have to keep in mind someone having venus seventh house and seventh lord free from the influence of mars powerful or okay okay at least free from major afflictions for that chart no matter what is the condition of mars mangal dosha is not applicable at all this is without any doubt true to my experience and since last 12 years i have advised many people on whom to marry when to marry have done many match making and all of them are very very happy and i have more than 50 feedback of people whom i told not to marry this guy they married and they sent me a message that sir your predictions are wrong i am going for a divorce this that etc predicting bad or good is not my purpose my only purpose is that you follow astrology for your better right this is the only purpose that i have so first of all all of these things you have to judge while judging the marks all of these factors that i have told you keeping these factors in mind you should judge whether mangal dosha is present in the horoscope or not and despite the mangal dosha getting present you should have to understand that the mars dosha creates a particular imbalance related to marital life if the horoscope is matched properly the nature behavior tendency character thinking of the spouse will be able to tackle this maleficence of mars that the native is getting and marriage will be good matching a mangali horoscope matching a horoscope with mangal dosha with another horoscope having mangal dosha does not do any difference until and unless all the factors of match making have take, been taken into consideration mangal dosha mars dosha is an added consideration while matching charts and is not the final say this is what should be very clearly understood all right this is all that i have to say for this particular video the topic can be extended more so what you can do is you can write me any query in the comment section below and if i find this query as something which should be answered i will probably answer it thank you for watching the video and this was about mars that's the planet and this mangal dosha is connected to the planet mars you say it a uh, you say it a uh, confusion you say it a uh, research you say it a uh, added part but the end point is that it is a uh, something that is related to mars mars is a planet many such things related to planets i am going to cover in my forthcoming course mastering the planets where i will be doing 11 classes one class on every planet nine classes and two extra classes on sun horoscope and moon horoscope where i will explore all the facets of planets how they influence the predictions and what is and how they should be used while making predictions timing events and giving remedies that i am going to teach in the course astrology is all about planets planets and planets rashi is ruled by planets planets natural signification of planet aspect of planet conjunction of planet rashi of planet navamsha of planet is the chart of planet astrology is all about planets and if you want to learn planets in depth mangal dosha is something but what about other planets how do they influence the horoscope and events and predictions you want to learn that mastering the planets is the course where you should get enrolled thank you for watching the video i will meet you in the next video namaskar